Welcome to Toffee TV. It is the man of the match show for the Everton Crystal Palace game on Saturday. The Toffees won the game by two goals to one. Feels good to be able to say that first victory of the season uh, and a good victory as well. Coming from behind, which is the first time we've done that under Sean Dighty and obviously the first time we've won a home game at Goodison Park when the opposition have scored since that Crystal Palace game back in May 2022. It's, it's been a long time, but we have done it now and that is out the way. It's Saturday. The weird thing about Saturday was I think it's actually the worst game Evan have played at Goodison this season. I thought the first half we were we were really poor. We've had a couple of magic moments in the second half and it's been enough to win us the game. It's just, that's the weird thing with football, isn't it? Is that you just never know, which is why wins are so important and so nice to be able to talk about it today. The man of the match, if you haven't seen it before, basically I pick a man of the match from the game at the weekend with my eyes at the game uh, on my match reaction without looking at any of the numbers and we go through the numbers on a Monday to see whether I've been massively wrong or my eyes haven't deceived me. Well, this weekend, I chose Dwight McNeil as my man of the match, quite simply because his goals won us the game. It wasn't a great performance by any stretch, like I've just said, but he's come up with two huge goals and two brilliant goals, to be fair. Both different. One, a tremendous long-range strike. We know that he's got that in his locker. The other one, great bit of close control and a volleyed finish to give us a huge, huge win. Very, very important. And so sometimes a player will be outstanding throughout the whole game, and I'll probably be proved wrong in my man of the match because there's probably other players who've done more in the game. But Dwight on this occasion has come up with two massive moments, and that's been key. And sometimes they have to be given that award in my eyes because they have been the, the big difference in getting the three points so there you go and, and obviously the goals are brilliant as well it wasn't two tappings and that to me is worthy of the man of the match so let's have a look at Dwight's basic numbers from the weekend here we have them 48 touches of the ball 73 percent passing accuracy uh, two goals which i've just mentioned two crackers from Dwight there uh, three shots uh, McNeil had in the game and he created one chance as well and you can see his heat map moving out what's weird about his heat map is it's not, he's not focused in one central area he was like dropping out and stuff and cutting back in so the you know, all over the place there which is really good I think he's really settling into that position you know that position just off Dominic Calvert-Lewin I've said before to me he's not quick enough for what Everton need to be a winger. And then if you're blessed with pace everywhere else and you've got a, a fullback bombing on, then yeah, you can, you know, you can get away with that. Because he, he isn't someone who'll get it and just drive a pace and whip crosses in. And he is quite one footed. But I think where he really comes into his own is in those central areas. Can, he's got a tremendous strike on him. We know that. He's evidenced that before for us. And I think that's why, you know, when he has got an eye for a pass as well. And I think the thing is with him in there, because he's got Calvert-Lewin and will win a lot of headers, he should be getting into those areas and getting those shots away more often than not. Because like I said, he's already evidence for us since in the time he's been at Everton that he can't strike them from there. He's key really for what we've got right now because he's probably the only one in our team, maybe Michael Keane on occasion, he's the only one in our team who you feel confident of someone picking it up and having a go from sort of 25, 30 yards. Dom isn't that type of centre forward. You know, and Jai at the moment, who's playing brilliantly, is more of a dribbler. You know, we haven't seen Lindstrom trying to do that. The core, he certainly can't do that. Mangala, who knows? You know, Adrissa has had a go every now and again. So in those areas, I think he's he's quite unique in our team and that's why he's probably really key at the moment. And he, he's got those in his locker and it's up to him now to make that position his own because I think putting him back on the wing... Take, I, th I don't think it helps the team. I don't think it helps Dwight. So, two crackers at the weekend. Let's have a look at his shot map. When the players had three shots in a game, it's always good to see where he's striking it from. And when two of them are goals, it's brilliant. There you can see is uh, the first goal, the one from outside the box. A tremendous strike. That one is goal inside the six-yard box. 
and the one that's gone wide there wasn't actually a shot, but it was a header at the end of the first half, which he probably, I think he'll say, probably should have done better. We've made a great run into the box and got there ahead of everyone, but I think, I feel like he closed his eyes the way it came off his head. Let's have a look at his attacking numbers then overall. Here we can see shot accuracy, 67% two of those three, ending in goals, of course. He had 48 touches. He had three touches in the opposition box. Not bad of it. Mind you, one of them was outside. So two inside the box. One he scored. One he's headed wide. The other one was a pass. He completed 33% of his dribbles. And he had four passes into the final third. The second lot of his attacking stats. Accurate passes, 73%. We've mentioned before. Created one chance in the game. An XG of 0.25. And expect the goals on target, 0.59. Expect the assists, 0.21. And he had an XG, an XA, XA even, of 0.46. His third set of attacking numbers, accurate long balls. He completed two out of three of those, 67%. One corner, he was dispossessed three times. And again, had that non penalty XG of 0.25. Like I say, the two goals for me were absolutely key. Those numbers aren't bad at all. Um, but yeah, that is the... Uh, the real key for having him there is that long-range shooting, of course. And like I said before, the only one really in our team who's got that. Let's have a look at the other side of his game, his defensive numbers. So he didn't win any tackles. He tried one and didn't win it. But he had two, def two defensive actions, two recoveries of the ball as well. And if we're looking at his duels, uh, won two duels, lost seven. Uh, ground duels won two out of eight. Uh, didn't win the aerial duel. Was fouled no times and committed one foul as well. But really, he's not in there, is he? He's not in there for that kind of thing. He's not in there for his defensive duels and his defensive actions. But he can help out and he does work hard. He runs around, gets tries to get in, tries to get blocks in and does support Dominic Calvert-Lewin well. So his number's looking OK. But like I say, I think overall, I, th I mean, them numbers aren't too bad at all. But the reason why I, the key reason why I give him man of the match because he was the difference maker on Saturday. So well played, Dwight McNeil, two cracking goals. Let's have more of that. Get them shots out your feet. Get them shots raining in on goal. And who knows, you know, if he's hitting them from there and the keeper saves them, even Calvert-Lewin can get on the end of the bits and pieces as well and could help us score more and more goals, which is what we're going to need as we go through the season, given we can't keep a clean sheet at the moment. But my notable mention is for somebody who returned to Everton's first team, his first game of the season, and that is, of course, Jared Brantway. So we all hope now we'll, uh, we'll stay injury-free for the season and help Everton get more clean sheets and, and certainly keep them goals down. I thought he came back and I thought the opening 20 minutes he was a bit a bit rusty, shall we say. Give Mateta, almost give Mateta a real chance. But as the game went on, he grew and grew into the game. So let's have a look at Jared's numbers from the weekend. Here we go. 46 touches of the ball. He's passing accuracy of 84%. Uh, Two out of two tackles, 100% of his tackles, won 100% of his ground deals, as you can see there, four out of four, completed five out of five of his clearances as well. And there's his heat map, obviously operates on that left-hand side of the fence um, and done it seamlessly. And no mistake, he's back in for, he's back into the team and, you know, an excellent performance from him. Like I said, opening 20, a bit rusty. You'd sort of expect that with him being out for so long, but he just adds that calmness alongside Tarkovsky. I think just this passing out from the back, so comfortable in possession. I haven't put it on there, but he, can, he had one dribble attempt in the game, completed it, of course he did. Uh, he won three out of six aerial duels, I think it was, as well. So a good, really good performance from Brantway to come back into the team. And there is a calmness there. You know, Michael Keane... I know the manager name checked him afterwards and said he was unlucky not to have uh, started the game. I just think there's a calmness when Brantwaite alongside Tarkovsky. Tarkovsky's not started the season well. No, he's been playing with an injury, and that's he's he's been a little bit off. I thought he was a, he was better at the weekend. He still wasn't amazing, but he was better. But he's better because he's got Brantwaite alongside him. I think he's everybody's calmer with Jared in the uh, in the side, and I think. Listen, he's a top quality defender and, you know, it makes a mockery of all those idiots who were, were bemoaning the fact that we wouldn't sell him to United for 30 or 40 million. He's a top class centre-back, he really is. You look at him and think, you just wouldn't look out of place playing for Manchester City, who are the best team in the, in the land and 
listen, I want him to stay. I hope he signs a new deal and becomes Evans' captain and we build around him. I just feel like he'll get to where he wants to be quicker than Everton will get to where they want to be. But we've got him right now and anyone coming in for him, it's 70 million at least. Uh, if he has another solid season then and a good season, then maybe it goes above 80 million. But he's absolutely fantastic and he was back at the weekend and hopefully... He'll just get better and better because he makes us a better team. That calmness, like I said, the advantage of playing out with a left-footed centre back who can play with the, you know play rather than just hit it anywhere, it's invaluable. And he is such a classy player. It was fantastic to see him back. So Jared Brantwick gets my notable mention. Listen, I could have mentioned Illiman and Die as well, who I thought was brilliant at the weekend again, um, but I'm not going to. I've just mentioned them without giving you those numbers. Uh, maybe we'll do that on the final word. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Who was your man of the match at the weekend against Crystal Palace? Was it Dwight McNeil, as I write? Was it Janet Brantwaite, who we've just talked about as well? Let me know in the comment section below. Give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. If you haven't, thanks for watching. See you later.